Congressman, first off, you know, the Warren Posse is you're you're they, they love you. You're one of the biggest stars we got. The question I got was, why is Burchett rubbing up on Joe Biden? And B- Biden came back with two, three times to talk to you again to tell us, please tell us, explain this one to us, sir. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, he's medicated and he has a very limited time. I was told by uh, actually a, a member of the medical profession in the Democratic Party that um, he probably had about 55 minutes. So um, so Matt Gates and Bovert are standing over there beside me, and, and Matt says, Burchett, do one of your endless stories, and let's see if you can double the time you delayed him from last year. So I leaned over to him, and I said, Mr. President, I said, uh, my brother used to have a 1972 Chevy Corvette, had a 350 in it. And he says, really? And I said, yeah. I said, a girl asked me out one time to a Sadie Hawkins dance, and so my brother let me take it. I was a soft, I said, that was 1980. And then I said, um, I peeled out in the parking lot of Brunswick Billiards. And then I said, um, I said let's see, I, I said, um, um, I started talking about the vet and how I peeled out. And then, oh, then I said, um, I said, you know, my wife and I really like chocolate chip ice cream. And then he just looked at me like, wow. And he goes, really? He said, so he started talking about chocolate chip ice cream. And then he asked me if I could, if he could have Kelly's phone number. <laughs> I thought, you creep. The old dude, I'm not going to swap wives with you. <laughs> and then he, he got away from me, and Matt said something like, see if you can get him back, Virgin, or something. But then he came back, and he started, and I said something, hey, have you seen those new Corvettes? And he said, yeah. He said, man, they're nice. And I said, yeah. I said something about that. kind of remind me of Ferrari or something. And then I said, uh, um, I said, man, they're really fast. And he said, yeah. He said, uh, they'll go zero to 60. And he goes like this. And he paused, just this awkward pause. And he said, in one second. And I was like, what? I was like, man, your eyeballs would be pulled out your ear holes. You know, at that kind of speed, you know, this is like fighter jet stuff. And then he goes, they're electric. And I said, I ain't no fan of those electric ones. And then I just turned. I turned from him at that point, and then it was over. But it was uh, it was interesting. And, you know, because everybody wants to people what? talk to him about national policy things that he, he doesn't have a clue about what's going on he didn't know the little lakin girl he didn't know anything he is completely clueless it is beyond belief what, really and it's it's what, a sad your 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 consti- your constituents because he painted a very rosy picture we've been going through the economics all this morning with some of the smartest guys on wall street he he painted a very rosy picture and how his policies were working for middle class and working class people, your constituents, what feedback did you get on that topic this they, morning, they last said, night or this morning, sir? They they said he is a liar. He is a liar. I mean, I, I I'm with working people all the time. They're my best friends. They are, they eat at my house. We go to the Mexon, our little Mexican restaurant that's attached to an Exxon. That's what we call it, the Mexon. And I and I those people all got their names on their shirts. Mr. Bannon, and they're they're fans of yours, and they're fans of mine, and the reason they are is because we don't give them a bunch of BS, and it's and it's it's tougher for them to feed a family. I see those people after church on Sunday, and they come by the table one after the other, and says the exact same thing: "We are struggling under this White House. What can we do to get him out?" I said, "You better vote for Trump. That's the only. That's the only." way we're going to save this country at this point. We are we are so far down the tubes. Well, Go ahead. I'm sorry. It, no, no. It's such a it's such a dramatic uh, difference. I mean, the good thing last night, uh, Biden sealed up the nomination. I mean, it's not going to be Michelle Obama. All that talk's going to go away. He he sold his constituents. He sold the audience he had to sell, which was these radical Democrats. But walk me through. What would your advice be to President Trump? It's game on now. Tim Burchett. The folks in the, in East Tennessee, what would they what would they tell Trump? What he's got to do to win this? I would say talk about the border, and, and just keep talking about the border. Uh, that's the issue. That's the issue everywhere I go. But I would work that into the four hundred billion dollars a year that we're paying to, to house these people and everything else, not including the fentanyl, not including the murders, not including the everything else, the the cost to our schools, our systems, and everything else. And I, and I would talk about fiscal responsibility and, and how it affects our economy. And I would put it in a very short, concise format that the president's very good at 
speaking to working class people. And I put myself in that. I'm not a, a very learned man. I mean, it took me six years to get to the University of Tennessee and I didn't drink or smoke pot. So, you know, I'm not I'm not at the top of the intellectual scale like yourself. I was never naval officer material. But um, I, I, and I, I think I would talk about how things were were under his leadership and the Republican controlled Congress and talk about the economy then well, versus the economy now, because people are struggling. You go to the you store. Now, it's, it's a sad state of affairs. When, when you talk about fiscal responsibility, do you think you and your colleagues, I know you guys are fighting over there, but you, we're going to do these mini buses. We just had Coach Tuberville over here. This thing's going to get through the Senate. We're, we're not going to shut down the government. Do you think the, the House Republicans as a body have been fiscally responsible? Hell no. And that's why um, my friend Matt Gates said today we were this sort of little group was convalescing over in the corner. And he said, we need a game plan. We've got 23, I'm sort of paraphrasing Matt, I'm not as eloquent as he is or learned. Um, but he said, you know, we've got 23 dadgum elections out here. We need to start working in these and putting people that think like we do and that know we're in a make or break situation. People that have the guts to shut the government down if we don't get a, um, if we don't get a border situation cleaned up. And, you know, everybody's wearing the buttons last night, and I get it. I didn't wear any buttons because this Congress does not have the guts to do what needs to be done. They do not have the guts. They do not have the guts to shut the government down. And they'll go home and talk. But, dadgummit, I wish people would use that as a litmus test because, you know, Reagan shut it down eight times and nobody was, you don't even hear about it. You know, it, it's the tool we have in our arsenal. Let's use it. Let's use it. I think the American people would support that. We could make the case for it. Uh, Congressman, what's your uh, website and social media? You're obviously a big fan of this audience. People want to know how to follow you. At Tim Burchett is is my ex. And um, that's I get the Bannon bump every time I'm on there. And Mr. Bannon, if I can, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of country folks, working class folks in the 2nd Congressional District and all over Tennessee, for that matter, that that hang on what you say and i just want to thank you for that you you served our country and our military and you're serving it now and and people love you because you're putting the truth out there it's unbridled well, and you have the president's ear our our president president trump and um and we appreciate that well thank i got the easiest job in the world I, we have a platform and we let guys like you and coach tuberville and scott besson and bobert on it's a, it's easy but we're always going to be there for them to make sure they get the real the, the real information so thank you right. congressman well, obviously tell everybody back, back there we love them and got their back thank you brother